They look good. I'm gonna chop these up and put these in some frames, y'all. The day has finally come to answer your questions. If my Epson T2170 can print onto watercolor paper, how it does on photo glossy paper. So I went ahead and I bought the Canon Photo Paper Glossy 2. I ran into an issue because when I first tried to do this, the paper that I bought was too small and this printer will not accept anything that is smaller than an eight and a half by 11. Probably arrange a couple small ones onto this to kind of see the quality. Normally I print directly onto canvas and here's an example. This one is 12 inches by 16 inches because I feel like it makes it look more realistic. This is a 12 by 16 canvas print. If you look closer, you can see the texture. And usually I'll leave a little bit of the white border just because it makes it easier to frame. It's not gonna be falling through the hole. This is the substrate that I normally print on. I print on the canvas. If you need the link directly to the canvas that I print onto, it's in the description box, or you can look it for it in my Amazon store. If you need a more detailed tutorial on how to turn your art into canvas prints from start to finish, or art prints in general, I have a full class on it and you can do a free preview too. So this is a wireless printer, but because I'm gonna be connecting to a hotspot, I'm actually gonna connect it using the USB cord. I'm using a MacBook Pro, so there is no USB. So I'm gonna to have to put an adapter on it to plug it into my computer. It has USB on one side and then USB-C on the other side. This is linked to my Amazon storefront. Plugging this into the USB printer cable and then putting it directly into my USB-C port. To load this paper in, you're gonna put your hand here and lift this up. This will expose the roll. I always print off the roll, but these samples are in the sheets, so I'm going to use my auto sheet feeder. You're gonna grab right here, and you're gonna push this back, and then grab this little blue thing and slide it up. Then you can go ahead and load your paper in. There's a little protective thing on the back. It looks like the Canon marked is the back side. I'm just gonna the front. Over it too much because I don't want the oils for my skin to mess it up. So I have three sheets of paper on the slide down here. I'm just gonna tighten the placement by pushing this, make sure it's centered. My printer sensed that I was up to something. So you can see that it says auto sheet feeder, paper type. I have coded generic. Coded paper generic is my normal print setting when I'm printing onto canvas. For this, I'm going to switch it to premium glossy sheet. And then for paper size, it says user defined. I'm gonna click it. Let's see, eight and a half by 11. So they already have this in there. If I had a custom size, then I would just go down here to user defined. And then I would just type in the width and the um, height. I'm gonna hit cancel, and I'm gonna hit the generic eight and a half by. And I'm just gonna hit okay. And so now it knows that the auto sheet feeder is going to be my default thing that I'm using currently. Go on to Canva and send a job through. Righty, now I'm gonna jump into Canva. I'm gonna go to custom size, uh, and it looks like it's already recent. So I'm gonna click eight and a half by 11. Hopefully it's vertical, sweet. So it'll be much easier. Now I'm gonna upload some family photos. Everything that I'm uploading is a JPEG with the exception of a couple HEICs. HEIC is just what your iPhone does when um, it wants to save space, it'll compress the image. And while that's great for saying, saving storage, you will not wanna use an HEIC to print from because the quality won't be as good. I also wanna check here. Uh, the resolution is also just 72 pixels per inch. Um, usually when I'm printing, I'll bump that up to 300, so four by six. I'll do a four by six instead. That way I can fit more. All right, six inches by four inches. And then I'm gonna double click on it and move it to the middle. So we are there. And I'm gonna set this one here. And then just so I can tell the difference in the two, I'm also going to place some text I'm just gonna put 72 resolution, and this is JPEG. This could be one of those things too, to where I, I don't see a noticeable difference because the image is small. Maybe once the image is larger, it'll become more apparent. All right, and now this one, I'm putting this 300 resolution. And this is a PNG. 
Typically when I'm printing onto canvas, I almost always have to sharpen it more because of the substrate. I don't know if I'll need to sharpen it, so I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. Okay, so I adjusted it to four by six. I double click it. I grab these little white dots and then I slide it down. That helps me a ton. And then for this one, I'm gonna have to rotate it. And this is also 72 resolution JPEG. So I'm just copying this and placing this underneath. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and send this first job and see how it goes. When I download this, I'm going to download this as a PNG. I download this. So now that I have it open, I'm just going to go file, print. I'm gonna select the Epson printer that has the MacBook Air because it's plugged in. Eight and a half by 11. I wanna make sure that it looks the way it's supposed to look. Yes, it has the white space on the side. Okay, and so from here, it says scale to fit. I'm not doing scale to fit. I'm making sure it's 100%. I want it to be exactly the same. I'm just using the normal quality settings. You can do like a fast print. The quality won't be as good. You can do a better print. But if you click the better quality, it's gonna use up a lot more ink. So the job is complete. It took it just under a minute and 20 seconds to finish printing. And these are the results. This is on to glossy paper. The one on the left is the one that has 72 resolution. The one on the right has a 300 resolution. Again, I think that's something that you probably won't notice at this size. Maybe once you start doing the larger print sizes like 16 by 20 inches and above, that's when that resolution really is gonna come into play. Um, this is also printing from a JPEG. This is printing from a PNG. Off the top of my head, I mean, they look super similar. The blues look a little brighter on the right, like in the jeans. I can see a little bit of a difference, but it looks really good. And then here's the other one. This one was done just 72 resolution in JPEG. And these are all four by sixes just because I didn't want to waste ink. So can it print onto glossy paper? Absolutely, and it looks great. It's been out of the printer for maybe, I don't know, 30 seconds. So when I touch it, I don't see anything on it. My canvas prints are always like touch dry when they come out, but I mean, these are dry. So yeah, not too bad. And then this is Canon paper. So on the back, it has the Canon symbol on there. So if you wanted to like prep these for clients, you would just have to slice them up and package them. But here's the family photo. And again, for this one, I just used 72 resolution and this is from a JPEG. Although my standard is 300 resolution and PNG. I think it's a good habit to have. And I didn't adjust the sharpness or anything. I just printed it straight from what the file was essentially from my phone. All these photos were taken with my phone. So I think it looks really good. The In terms of the glare, I think the glare is fine. I think it's pretty typical for when you are um, getting photo paper. I have a bright window behind me. So here's what it looks like when I'm turning it with the glare behind me. But overall, I feel like they look good. Um, maybe a touch on the dark side, but I think that's just because of the settings that I used. <laughs> um, I'll show you what it looks like compared to the image on the computer. So there's that photo, here's that. Here's that photo, here's that section that I'm in is kind of dark, but I think it looks really, really good. All right, so a four by six here. This is just regular 72 resolution JPEG. I am gonna brighten it, so I'm gonna put plus 10 brightness. Whenever I'm doing test prints, I usually like to put a little text blurb. That way I know the instructions. This is super helpful too if I'm ever doing test prints and I need somebody else to send the print jobs for me, then they know exactly what all they need to do. So I'm just gonna click edit image, adjust, and brightness, I'm gonna type 10. That's my standard for brightening my normal prints anyways. Put page two and the paper size also. I'm gonna select the Epson printer. 
make sure that that scale is a hundred percent if you hit enter it will hit print so make sure you wait took a minute 38 to print and I think it looks fine I mean considering that I've done like no photo editing I think it looks fine I haven't done any photo editing I haven't made it sharp or anything it just came out of the printer it took um, about a minute 38 to print this one page and it's also dry to the touch so Another good thing, if I were printing these for a client personally, I would sharpen them more. I feel like everything I've printed hasn't been like super sharp, but again, like this is just what it's like straight out the gate. Like if you go from phone to print, if you are a professional, then you know how to, you know, to sharpen things, to color correct things to make it look good. But I feel like the quality is good. The thickness is, it's, it feels thicker than the photos I typically would buy from like a Walmart pickup. So I think the quality is really, really nice, personally. So if you want this paper, I actually have this in my Amazon store, it's linked, but for 20 sheets, it costs $7.99. Oh, wait, is that how much I pay for it? Hold on a second, hold on. If you take my class, you'll have access to a Google Sheet where it helps you calculate how much your media will cost you by roll, by sheet, how much the ink cost and uh, something to help you manage your print sales. Where to purchase this paper? There are 20 sheets in the package. It costs seven dollars ninety nine cents with tax. It cost me eight forty seven. I use Prime, so I don't have to pay the shipping. And so basically, for each individual sheet, you're spending forty two cents. For an eight by ten, you can expect to spend forty two cents per print. For five by seven, you can expect to spend 21 cents per print because you can fit two on the sheet. For four by six, it'd be 14 cents and five by fives would be about 14 cents per print. For me to print an eight by 10, it would be about 34 cents. So here's the price for an eight by 10. Um, with the print plus the ink, it'd be about 76 cents per print. For a five by seven, you're looking at 36 cents total. That's paper plus ink for a four by six you're looking at 14 and 10 to get 24 cents and for a five by five you're looking at 14 cents plus 11 cents which will get you 25 cents so if you want access to that google sheet you'll just need to go to shakiaharrisart.com slash online courses or you can go to the description link as you can see i cover everything from which media you should print on how to choose your printer photographing your artwork um, using software to edit your photos, understanding which print sizes you should offer, as well as using market research to determine what's in demand. Um, I have a download to help you track your competitors, fulfillment and delivery, how you can ship them, whether you're doing mailing tubes, flat mailers, how to get shipping quotes, shipping supplies, and I even have links to products. I can help you calculate the cost using that art print cost calculator. Um, I go over packaging and display, whether you're doing small or large prints, trimming them, framing them, how to set up your booth to where you can have a positive in-person shopping experience, uh, technology you can use to stage your prints to, ship, to sell. Um, I have something to help you track your print sales, which is super huge. Um, ways you can increase your average order by you know, having add-ons and upsells. Um, if you don't want to do the printing yourself or you want to print onto things like I am, like bags or journals, I have ways to locate manufacturers, drop shipment, um, how to delegate tasks to get the most done in your art business, answering questions on print editions, and a whole little section about wholesaling too. So definitely check this out if you are on the fence. Um, I have so many resources on my website, but also you can just do a free preview. Like it's super simple. You'll just go straight here and click the free preview button. So my overall thoughts with pr printing onto the Canon photo glossy paper. I mean, I think it's really nice quality. If I were to receive a photo, if I were to receive a photo on this quality paper, I wouldn't think anything of it. And the printer does do like an auto cut if you're printing off the roll. But for these, you would obviously have to use, you would have to cut them yourself and package them. But they look good. I'm gonna chop these up and put these in some frames, y'all.